Well, welcome back to our uh, Christian wardrobe. Uh, it's a big wardrobe. We got a big God. We got a, a real enemy. Uh, we're we're learning how to dress for battle, dress to be warriors, um, and and it's it, it's a supernatural equipment. It's grace. Uh, each piece. It's not mechanical, but sometimes it's good to learn it, to go through each piece mechanically, putting it on by prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to help, practicing standing and exercising uh, each part of the armor. There's, there's, you know, the, 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 most of them are defensive positions to stand, but there's also, you stand for reason, not just to resist, but sometimes you rebuke and you take offensive with the sword of the Spirit, uh, the Word of God. And so we want to kind of put it together uh, in, in a, and again, sometimes you'll pick one particular piece of the armor that's important, and Paul stresses all of it, but not to be legalistic, but just to know that we need to be fully covered, fully uh, protected, and God's provided the means for that. But I, I love the scene uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the, the movie, and I know it's got a couple parts in it that, that don't need to be in there. Uh, uh, that's just Hollywood, but uh, Braveheart has a, a great scene where the, the, the William Wallace has got his face painted, and they're dressed, and all their warriors are behind them, and, and they're, they're, they're about to face off uh, the, the Scottish Highlanders against the, the, the English, and, and they uh, normally... Uh, what would happen is they would come to this point in battle and then the, the landlords uh, that had sold out their souls to the English would ride out and they would make some compromised deal and they'd get more land and it would be a, just a big show. And so, but William Wallace uh, said to his troops, it was a great speech, uh, and he said, he said, well, we didn't get all dressed up for nothing. In other words, they're in their, their war paint and their shields and their swords and their, their weapons and their, they've got an enemy in front of them and, and they're going to have to go to battle. And so putting on the armor is not an intellectual, hey, I wrote good notes and I know a lot about it, but you've you got to learn to wear it. You've got to learn to put it on. And so the, one of the, there's several places in our walk with God Paul mentioned earlier in chapter 6 of Ephesians that, that you'll have all the armor on so that when the evil day comes at you, you'll be able to stand. So there are those dark days, evil days that are way harder than other days or assaults. or You've got to know how to stand in those evil days. You also got to know how to stand when you're ministering to others or praying the gospel, bringing the gospel, or I meant proclaiming, sharing the gospel with others. You've got to be dressed when you're, you're going to do ministry. Uh, you you want to know that you're, you're walking and protected. When we go in the mission field and when we go to bike nights or, or Halloween giving out hot dogs, you say, oh, just Halloween. It's a vicious time in the spirit. Let's dress in our armor. Let's be careful. We're not going to be fearful. We're going to be alert, cautious, and we're not overestimating or underestimating our enemy. So Paul wraps this all up after he talks about the belt of truth, standing in that your loins girt, your strength of the God's, God's truth, God's wisdom. Then he talks about the breastplate of righteousness, guards our heart. Then he talks about the boots of peace, the shield of faith. Then he talked about the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Now he's dressed this warrior, is dressed. Now what does he do? It's not happening. Now sometimes Paul moves on to the next subject. But in this case, he's still on the same subject. Because he says in verse 19, pray also, oh, I'm sorry, verse 18. We'll get to 19. And the word and connects to the thought of the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, always keep on praying for all the saints. Verse 19, pray for me. The end of verse 20, pray that I would declare the gospel fully. So he uses the word prayer one, two, three, four, five times in three verses. 
And when you have a, a big uh, 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 you know, short verses with that repetition, th there's a reason he's kind of summarizing. Now some argue and say prayer is the seventh piece of the armor. If you've been counting, there's been six pieces. We dealt with them in couplings, uh, two, two, two. But some would say the seventh piece is the weapon of prayer. I, I wouldn't argue with that. I, I'm not, I, I think it's as powerful. Someone has said prayer is like a ballistic missile. Uh, you, you can fire it thousands of miles away and except it travels faster than a ballistic missile at the speed of the, the, of, of the, the, the grace of God. And it can land in another country, another continent. It, can, it can't be, there's no uh, air defense against it. The enemy can't stop the power of prayer. So, yes, it, prayer is, a, is a, a powerful weapon against darkness. But I, I want us to see that both as a weapon, though, but also as the arena, or the, as if you think of a coliseum uh, where the, the gladiators would go to fight, uh, it, it's in there that they got, they practiced, they warmed up, they got their armor on, their gear, but that where it really all came together was on the battlefield in the Colosseum. I think that's prayer. Not that it's not a weapon, but it's, it's the arena primarily where you need all these pieces of armor. Now you need them in other areas of life. Uh, you need them in your marriage. You need them in your relationship that when you feel assault. But I think you'll never feel more vulnerable more defenseless, more weak, more susceptible than when you try to cry out to God in prayer. There'll be distractions, there'll be threats, there'll be mind wandering, there'll be fiery darts coming in your head, there'll be the enemy trying to come off your footing and, and kill you from standing. He'll aim at your heart and rob you of your calm. He'll, the enemy will basically let you almost do anything but pray. I mean, it, it is when it gets real for him. Again, but for us, it feels weak and, and wow, that's no big. I mean, I don't care. There can be times you can scream boldly and, and, and feel powerful, and, and, but that doesn't make you powerful. Jesus rarely had to raise his voice. He'd just say, Father, I ask that you would, and then boom, he brought God on the scene. Father, I pray for, boom, he's on the scene. It's not about how bold he sounded, it's how much he believed. So I think if you'll learn to dress until it becomes natural, that you, you go to prayer knowing the Holy Spirit has dressed you for armor. Paul first talks about praying in the Spirit. Now, verse 18, that can mean a, a couple different applications. Praying in the Spirit is that... It, it, inclusive of being energized by, led by. Uh, he says in chapter 8 of the book of Romans that we don't know how to pray as we should, but the Holy Spirit helps us in our intercessions. Uh, and, and, and so there's that enabling of the Holy Spirit guiding our, our prayers. Uh, there's times where, you know, I may have prayed for something for a long time and the Lord kind of tweaks it and, and gives it a different focus or, or broadens the focus or uh, you know, call, you know it's, 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 a, it's a prayer that is uh, uh, inspired by, directed by the Holy Spirit. Now, that doesn't mean he hollers at me and says, Jamie, pray about this, but it's nudges, and you learn to pay attention. Boy, I've often will say to someone, hey, the Lord put you on my heart. That's the Holy Spirit, and I'm, I'm going to pray for I don't know what's going on. Sometimes I do know what's going on, and I'll just pray, and Holy Spirit is enabling me. It also can apply to the prayer language, which we refer to as, the Bible refers to as speaking in tongues. Praying to God in your spirit and not in your uh, own understanding. So there, there is that, that prayer in the spirit where he's giving you the language. He's giving you the words not in your language, but in a heavenly language. A language unlearned but given to you. And it's a powerful tool uh, that, that, that to use in both praying in articulate English, or in my language, if you're Spanish, it's Spanish, but it's, it's, a, it's a prayer language of your spirit, groaning, crying out, 
uh, and, and words that, 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 that he gives to you and forms to you, that he knows what they mean. Your spirit somehow knows, but your intellect doesn't get it. So there's that in the praying. So which one, I, you know, I'm, I'm like, because I love, I think it's the next statement he makes, he, he says, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. So you have the Holy Spirit leading because the occasion's different. Is this a, is this a celebrative prayer? Is this a warfare prayer? Is this a healing prayer? We teach in our prayer training. You don't just have one tool, one club, and boom, you hit everybody over the head with it, prayer. Boom! You know, it's like, no. You know, they, may, they may need comforting prayer. They may need prayer for healing or restoration. They may need prayer of warfare and deliverance. And, and so it's not only in the Spirit, but it's, there's, there's all these various occasions that life brings at us. Uh, sadness and pain and heartache and attacks and assaults. And, and so it, prayer, the Holy Spirit will help you to match the occasion uh, at all, and all kinds of prayer. So all kinds of occasions call for all different kinds of prayer. And so again, teach my hands to war. Lord, let me learn to be a prayer person that knows when it's intercession and you just want me to cry out for somebody. You know when it's just a persistent banging on, that, you know, you know, banging on your throne, Lord, saying, God, please bring this person back to Jesus. When it's God tear down these lies that the person's believing. You know, it's, 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 it's the advance work uh, is prayer. You know, it's, it's bombing out the enemy before we go in to take the ground. Praying over what's, uh, what's about to happen. So Paul anchors this armor into, you could call it the weapon of prayer, but I also love to see it as the arena, the battlefield. And I know the battlefield's in our mind, often the attacks, the assaults, it's in our thought life. That's why learning to resist the shield of faith, helmet of salvation, overcoming thoughts that are relentless, that destroy and attack our relationship with God. But once you put on that helmet, resist those things, now this is more weaponry going on the offense. Uh, it's, it's taking back the ground that the enemy's stolen. It's conquering in the name of Jesus through the simple act of prayer. And then he says, with, keep this in mind, be alert, always keep on praying. The opposite of being alert is that you're, you're lulled into this false sense of yeah, everything's good, hey, it'll all work out. It never amazes me when I say to somebody, hey, hey what can I pray for you about? And they're like, mm, eh, I'm, I'm good. I've never been at that place in my life where I didn't have a lot of things you could pray for me about. Sometimes they're very personal and I wouldn't give you the details, but I may give you the general area to pray in. Sometimes they're extremely specific, and I could give you the specifics of how I'd like you to pray and, and what's needed in that prayer. Because prayer is, is, is more than just casting this big giant net of, oh God, please help them. That's good, but, but there's a strategicness to prayer targeted by the Spirit are we coming against uh, 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 something that's a, a mental lie lodged in somebody? Are we, are we praying for the, 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 the kidneys to start working? Are we praying for the blood level levels to be balanced? Are we, let, let be specific. People in their prayer cards tend to just say, pray for Johnny and Sally and Susan and Fred and da 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 da. And be specific. God, Johnny needs this. We're praying for this. Better to pick two people, be specific, and then go after those things. And then Paul tells them, uh, pray for all the saints. It's a, it's a command. And let me help you here, because oftentimes one of the biggest Christian sins, not biggest sins, let me say it this way, one of the most common sins is someone says, hey, you know, be praying for me. I got a big meeting tomorrow. And the person, and you say, sure. And then you don't do it. That's not good. That's bad. That's a big deal. Integrity is a big deal to God. Faithfulness is a big deal to God. So either A, write it down that you're going to pray, or B, pray right then. That's, that's my go-to. My memory's, it's not my strongest 
uh, uh, it's just not my strongest. I meant well, but when I say to somebody, I'm going to pray for you, I, you know, either as they walk away, I'll say, Lord, I lift them up right then. Or better, I say, Look, let's just pray. Someone, uh, on Sunday morning, it happens at a regular time, hey, hey, pray for my son. He's a pastor of so-and-so. And, and uh, I said, all right, let, let's do it right now. And I pray for him right then. Now, if he comes back to my mind, I'll pray for him again. Now, I'm not committing to pray for him the rest of my life, but I said I'd pray for him, and I did. And now I'm relaxed. If it comes back to me, I'll pray for him again. Came back to me right now. Bless him, Lord. Keep your hand on him. I hear an ambulance. My wife and I have learned every time we hear an ambulance, we're going to pause. I don't close my eyes if I'm driving. I don't, you know, fall on my knees on my face. But I just, we just whisper a simple prayer. Oh, God, be with whoever's in need that's crying for help and be with those that are going to bring care. And if he gives me more, then I'll pray more. Or I just prayed that. So prayer is something that we're all called to, but the more confident you have in being in armor of God, the more you can say, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would tear these lies down out of my loved one's life that's keeping them captive. And so Paul says, pray for me, verse 19. This is humility. Let me remember, pride will destroy all the pieces of the armor. You know, I had a, a, a friend years ago uh, that I helped introduce to the vineyard. And I helped, he's a pastor. He actually pastored back then in Cape Coral. And I was on Sanibel. And I introduced him to the vineyard and, and therefore I introduced him to the things of the Holy Spirit. He was oblivious to the power of the kingdom of God now. And yet there's the coming of the kingdom, the not yet. He didn't know about spiritual work. Well, he, he took things that I trained him in and, and conversation went to, and he, and he started getting into some other streams, and, and he got into this, this prayer, and uh, he would talk to me, he said, Jamie, I, I'm spending two, three hours a day in prayer. And I'm like, I felt like a loser pastor, because I, I don't know, I've done it a few times in my life, uh, but never consistently have I ever prayed that long in one setting. And he's doing this like two, three, four, five times a, a week, and so I'm like, wow, man, that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty powerful, uh, man. And, and then next I call him, and a few weeks later, he goes, Jamie, listen, I met the principality, using the word that Paul uses of different levels of demon. That would be a demon, some would feel, over a particular city or an, a, a region, an area. He said, I've met the principality face-to-face -face over Cape Coral. I've pulled him down. In the name of Jesus, I have done spiritual warfare and I've torn him down. And we're going to see an amazing revival in Cape Coral. And I'm like, well, that violates about five things inside of me that I, I understand about spiritual warfare. But I didn't confront him. I kind of regret it. I don't think he'd have been teachable at all. By now, he's kind of looking down at me because he's in this spiritual plane. And... and and then the next step I come to find out, his wife meets with us, and she's coming home from working all day, finding two, three women from the church praying with her husband in intercession, believing God, while she's working her rear end off and being a mother. And, and she felt guilty. She felt bad about that. And then she came in one evening after working, and one of the women had a bowl of water and was washing her husband's feet like he's Jesus and taking her hair and rubbing it on her feet. And she felt guilty that she was upset about that. I said, I, you should have grabbed him by the hair and thrown him out of the house and said, in the name of Jesus, tell your husband, you go on with him. It was wicked. The enemy took him down. He lost his marriage. He lost his church. He lost his integrity. All in the understanding that he had won the victory. Let me just tell you, it's never our place to try to go pick a fight with the devil. It's never our place to try to go into the devil's air ways, if you will, and try to fight there. When he comes on our turf, he attacks us, he assaults us, he's on my territory, come at him face to face in the name of Jesus. But when you're trying to climb into his world and you're trying to pull, you've, you've, excuse me, you've entered his world by trying to climb into it, by trying to pridefully think 
That's the only, remember Michael the archangel in the book of Jude didn't even rebuke the devil over the body of Moses. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Now, we've been given authority in Jesus' name to rebuke the devil, but that's assuming he's assaulting us. He's attacking us. We're not looking this way. It's when it's this way, when he's attacking the church, attacking our unity, attacking our faith. Now we go on the offensive and we fight back. So Paul wasn't afraid to say, pray for me. And he went on in humility to ask for boldness of preaching, which on a side note for my wife and I, if you ever wonder, what should we pray for Jamie and Kim? You just pray what he says in verse 19 and 20, that we could fearlessly preach the word of God and with boldness and not intimidated and not cowering. And it's going to get harder and harder in the days ahead. Uh, uh, social pressure, cultural pressure, demonic pressure on those that are trying to honor Christ with his word. It, it's just going to get harder. Uh, and so we covet uh, your prayers uh, and, and just praying for our family and protection around us. I can't thank you enough, those of you that pray for us regularly. Uh, no matter how much armor you wear and how much you know of the word of God, Knowing that resource, that backup, that we got your back, that we're fighting with you and for you and around you, and we're holding our shields up, Whew, I wouldn't still, we, we, we wouldn't be in the ministry today if it wasn't for some of your prayers. So keep us going. Pray for our staff, our team. Pray for our families. We covet your prayers. You're a warrior. And God didn't give you that sword for nothing. And he didn't provide that armor for nothing. You're not a coward. Uh, in, the, in the natural, I'm a coward, but in the kingdom, I'm a warrior. I'm brave through the courage Jesus gives, not through Jamie. So dress in that armor and go to battle on your knees and watch the kingdom come. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, just come and dress us for battle and teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray in all different circumstances, all different kinds of prayers, Enlarge our ability, our persistence, our, 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 our skill in being able to pray in your strength and power and effectiveness. We love you, Lord. Bless our groups. Thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.